All right, you guys, this is Ross. Today we're gonna look at one of my favorite berries. It's called the Marion Berry, and it's basically a cross between a few blackberries. I think there's even some raspberry in there. And essentially it is uh, what you would think of, at least visually, and it feels like when you eat it, it feels like a blackberry, but it, it certainly has a lot of raspberry flavor and really intense flavor to it. So for me, out of all the berries I've ever tried, I mean, and I've grown a lot here, still growing a lot here in this yard in the Philadelphia area, I've tried almost all of them. Um, you know, aronia berries, raspberries of all different colors, strawberries, alpine strawberries, honeyberries, currants, yosta berries, gooseberries, kiwi berries, uh, gumi, if you want to call that a berry, uh, goji berries, um, Honey berries, uh, Saskatoons. I mean, there's so many berries that I've tried. And for my money, this is just, it really is one of the better tasting ones. I'd probably put this in a class with the, the black raspberry, the kiwi berry, uh, the gumi, and the honey berry, I think are the tops. And also the alpine strawberry uh, belong, I think, in a higher class of uh, just a foodie experience. And let me taste some of these now for you guys. Uh, these are dead ripe, very soft. You can see they're really um, kind of bloody when you pick them there. And that is just incredibly sweet and an intense raspberry flavor, oddly enough. So there's where that raspberry genetics comes in and that to me is what really makes this so special. It's really taking the flavor of a like a darker raspberry like a purple raspberry a black raspberry even a red that's well ripened and, and multiplying that flavor by like two and then injecting it into this blackberry that one um had a little bit of a grape flavor as well and so maybe even a little bit of mulberry flavor so this is like a combination this berry of like a blackberry a raspberry, a mulberry, and maybe a little bit of grape. So it's got a lot going for it, this thing. Um, the problem with it is, is that I've really struggled to get it established along this trellis. Here in zone seven, it's seven A here in the Philadelphia area. This plant is just not hardy to this location. So what you gotta do is you gotta train it up the trellis, whatever trellis you decide to go with, bring it down off of the trellis in the winter and the fall, cover it with mulch and get it through the winter time. And then when in the spring, you unveil it and put it back up on the trellis and it'll survive, no doubt. But I've also just struggled even during the growing season with these plants. I mean, these things last year were all over the, the wire system here that I set up. And there's just something that happens to them. I don't know. They just seem very brittle, easy to break. Here's a new cane that's coming up from the base of a plant that uh, tip rooted itself last year. And the thing was super long. I didn't even notice it. And then I tried to get it up here off the ground and put it on the trellis and it broke off. So I just find whatever it is with these plants, you got to be careful with them. They're extremely thorny and that's the problem, I think, as well. So for me, I don't remember who it was. Somebody reached out to me on Instagram. I'm sorry for forgetting the name, but they said, Ross, you ought to plant a blackberry. It's a Marion berry, but it, it has, doesn't have thorns. And they're supposed to taste just as lovely and as good as a, a Marion berry. Again, but it's thornless. Now, I don't know the hardiness rating of this one, but I imagine it's probably not very good here in zone seven. So I imagine the same thing, I would have to take it down off the trellis and cover it. This is, I think a Columbia, Columbia Star, is it? Oh no, forgetting the name of this thing. Um, I'll put it down in the comments for anyone that's interested. Uh, this is basically what they say on One Green World's website, which is where I got this. I think they sell it in other places as well there's three of them there's like a columbia giant columbia star or columbia beauty or something i'm not sure 
But the point is, is that this one here is supposed to be the closest to a Marionberry and thornless and equally good. So we'll see how this one turns out next year. But that's basically the, uh, the thoughts I have on this amazing berry. Um, I've decided to plant this one over here, probably in a better spot. It gets a lot more sunlight. This is obviously a different trellis setup. I think this will be a little bit easier to care, uh, care for and look after it. Uh, maybe even slightly easier to protect this thing in the winter. So um, we've got this thing going over here and I hope to update you guys next year on this particular plant. So I really would highly suggest planting some Marion berries, guys. They're easy to propagate, easy to have uh, fine plants. So yeah, uh, we'll talk to you guys soon. Hopefully you, uh, you do what I tell you there because I'm telling you these berries are incredible. Uh, we'll see you for the next one. Take care, guys.